Hello everyone, I'm Michelle and we are at the Morgan YMCA and today I'm excited to share with you some culinary lessons that you can do at home. We are going to start by our mise en place, which is a French term which means putting things into place. This right here is my trusty garbage bowl. When you don't have a garbage can in sight, this is super helpful to keep it right next to your counter or your kitchen table and put all of your trimmings and things in. So I'm going to scoot it right over here and pop it behind. Today we're going to be making pasta pomodoro. Pomodoro just is a simple tomato sauce. So the first things that we are going to do is we're going to take a can of peeled whole tomatoes and plop them into a blender. If you don't have a blender, then a food processor works just as well. And if you don't have either of those, a great tip is to have your little ones come and join you. Get a big rimmed bowl and have them squish it with their hands. It's a lot of fun. So either way, we've got you covered. We're going to give a little sprinkle of sugar into this, and that is to balance the acid so it's not too acidic. So just a little sprinkle. And don't worry, we're gonna be providing you a full recipe for you to click on um, and download at home as well. So we're setting this off to the side. Our next plan here is we're gonna start prepping our onions and garlic. We're gonna need a half of an onion for this recipe. I just wanted to give you guys a quick little tip on how to cut an onion properly and quickly. So you see here, this is the root of the onion and this is the other side. You want to leave the root in, um, intact. That way, when you start to dice your onion, it holds it together. So a little tip there. Of course, you're going to peel the onion, get the skin off. And from there, here's a little technique here. So if you take nice slices straight down of course when you're holding your chef's knife you want to make sure to hold it the proper way which is your pointer finger and your thumb on the very end of the blade and wrapping your three other fingers under that little nook there so that's the proper way to hold your chef's knife and then your other hand you want to make it like a claw and tuck your fingers in of course that's just to protect your fingers so i'm going to turn it away from the camera just to make sure i don't do anything that will hurt my fingers so from here, you're gonna do two slices down the onion. So one in the middle and then one on the top. Again, making sure to tuck those fingers in. So you're gonna slice all the way down and then do it again on the top here. So this is kind of, it's like a laying it out if you take a look of what that looks like. So that way when you chop into it, it makes a quick dice, I'll show you. When you're using your chef's knife, make sure to leave the tip of the blade on the cutting board and you're gonna make nice, small slices all the way through and as you can see this is going to give you a nice dice now if you're a home cook and you haven't had a lot of experience before it's easy just enough to go ahead and run your knife through the rest of the cutting board to get them a little bit smaller if you need to so here's our onions that half an onion looks pretty good and you know it's okay if everything looks rustic rustic is definitely delicious either way so i'm going to take this and pop that into my trusty old garbage can from here i'm going to take a little bit of olive oil and it's about one tablespoon i've been cooking a long time and so i know exactly what that looks like you can just eyeball it i'm going to put the garlic off to the side for now and i'll come back and mince that in a minute but as I put the onions in, I'm just gonna use my knife and scoot it into the pan. I don't know if you can hear that sizzle, but that sizzle is a great sign. That's exactly what you want to hear when you pop it in. If I didn't hear a sizzle, that would just mean that my heat isn't high enough. So I would turn that up, just pop it up, and I think I'm going to anyways, because I can be even more sizzly. And give it a good stir so that you've got your extra virgin olive oil kind of all over. You're gonna cook the onions for about five minutes or until they're translucent, and I'll show you what that looks like. So, the way to peel a garlic clove, there's many different um, contraptions that you can get, but you also can use just your trusty old chef's knife. So if you leave it, of course, the blade is going to be away from you just for safety, and you're gonna put your hand and give it a nice little press down. 
It crushes the garlic clove for you and starts to peel the skin off automatically. So the same kind of, I'm just gonna give my knife a quick little clean here. The same kind of cuts where we're gonna slice it into small thin slices, tucking our fingers in. And then I'm going to turn my knife the other way, keeping the tip of my knife on the blade and the cutting board. And this is called mincing. Mincing is a quick and easy way to get things nice and small. So you kind of spread it out over the cutting board, chopping it down finer and finer until that's what you're looking for. I'm gonna stop to give this a quick little stir here. So it's best to heat your onions low and slow rather than high and fast or else they'll burn. Onions actually have a lot of sugar in them, um, so that's what that gets that caramelization. It's really yummy and delicious, but you want to cook it till it gets almost clear and translucent, which is almost there. So your garlic only takes about a minute because that really burns quickly, and when garlic does burn, it becomes very bitter, so you don't want to do that. So I'm going to scoop that up, pop that into... This is actually just a portable skillet. I don't know about you, but this time in our lives and with everything that's going on, it seems to be um, a really great idea to find ways to be resourceful. So that's why I chose this meal for you. This is something that has almost all the ingredients most likely you already have at home. They're in your pantry or they're staples that you have um, in your refrigerator. So, I'm going to be giving you some different episodes as we are away and we're all stuck in quarantine. Things that you can do, it's a great family activity, getting, getting your family all together and helping out in different areas. Okay, so this is looking pretty good to me. And I'm gonna bring the camera over here so you can see what the translucent onions look like before it starts to turn and get too cooked. So come on over and take a look. you've had a chance to look at the onions and garlic once they're cooked what you do is you're going to pop these right into the blender we're going to incorporate the onions the garlic there's a remember that little bit of sugar and just a touch of salt popping these in and when you mix the blender, you're going to make sure to mix it until it's nice and smooth. If you prefer to have a different um, consistency, then that's totally fine. If you like it a little bit chunkier, then hold off and don't do the whole thing. I'm just giving it, kind of starting it out a little bit just to break up um, these whole tomatoes. Okay, so I found the lid, which is imperative when you use a blender. So I'm gonna do a little sprinkle of salt here. Um, you could do this, I actually should have put this in ahead of time and sprinkled it in with the onions and olive oil and a little bit of garlic, but I forgot, so I'm going to do it now, which is totally fine. So just a little bit will do ya. And um, you always do a little toss over your left shoulder to the left. Okay, so we're gonna start this here. I'm gonna turn it so I can see it. And I'm going to do a bowl. That looks pretty good to me. Now, if I'm cooking at home, I could do something like this to taste it. Delicious. <laughs> but of course, you're cooking for other people, you'd want to use a separate so all you do with this, once it's blended up nice and smooth to the right consistency, you're going to pour it right back into the saute skillet. And you might want to stand back if you didn't turn your heat down. So this is going to simmer for a good 20-25 minutes. And once that is finished, we'll come back in just a few minutes and I'll show you what that looks like, our next steps of how we cook the pasta. Okay, so 
I previously cooked these noodles ahead of time, um, and today I'm using a spaghetti noodle, but you certainly can use any pasta that you have in your pantry. So linguine, corkscrew pasta, anything will work for this. It all tastes the same. Um, and I drained it in a colander. You don't want to rinse it because rinsing it is going to wash all the way the starch that's in the noodles. And um, in order for the sauce to stick to the noodles, it's better if you don't rinse it because it'll cling really good to it. So follow me over here. Okay, so this has been simmering for 25 minutes. It smells amazing. Um, the last step before we plate and serve is you, if you did have by chance any fresh basil at home, you would take the basil and gently tear little pieces off and put it into your pasta and let it sit and heat through for about maybe two minutes or so. The reason why I would tell you to um, tear the basil is because you bruise it if you don't. So if you're gonna use a knife and you're pushing really hard on it, fresh herbs are very delicate. So it's better just to um, hold the integrity of the herb and give it a quick little tear. We don't have that today, so if you didn't have that at home, I'm sure you have some dried basil. And if you don't have that, like we don't have here at the Y today in our pantry, but we do have some Italian seasoning, which has a little bit of rosemary in it, it has basil, like we were just talking about it, and a couple other things. And so it's gonna give it just a quick little sprinkle here. Um, if you, just another quick little tip I'll tell you as well, instead of dumping it straight into here, when you season, you want to season from up high and sprinkle in, that covers more area and it's going to give it an even distribution as opposed to just dumping it into one spot. I think I need just a touch more here. Um, you also can rub your dried herbs and that's going to uh, release some of the flavor if it's been in your pantry for a while. So this is all set and ready to go. I'm going to take my spaghetti and put it in my serving bowl. You of course could do this family style, buffet style. I'm going to transfer it, the whole thing, over here into a serving plate and then I'll bring it to my dinner table. So here's my spaghetti and this awesome portable skillet is going to move with me as I set it over here. If you had some additional fresh basil, you could always do a couple of little teared pieces, torn pieces on the side. And then to finish it off, some freshly grated Parmesan or Romano cheese, whichever is your favorite. Romano cheese tends to be just a little bit more salty, which I love. Today we have Parmesan. And voila, there you are. Thank you for rolling up your sleeves and cooking with me today. I look forward to more episodes here at The Y. Thanks for joining The Y. We are committed to keeping you healthy and staying active during this time. I hope you join me again. Bye.